Hello folks, this is James and today we're going to memorize the treatment of hypercalcemia using a simple medical mnemonic A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So let's get started. First, let's have another look. All right, let's get started. Active surveillance for asymptomatic patients. According to the American Family Medicine Association, there was no benefit from normalizing calcium levels in asymptomatic patients who had mild hypercalcemia. It is recommended to immediately and aggressively treat patients with calcium levels greater than 14 mg per deciliter or in any symptomatic patients with calcium levels greater than 12 mg per deciliter. These phosphonates are used often in the treatment of hypercalcemia. Examples of nitrogen containing bisphosphonates include alendronate, ristronate, and ibandronate. First, let's describe a bit of some basic physiology. Osteoclasts, which I have depicted on the left here, get signals from osteoblasts on the right. These signals can be positive or negative. Positive signals is a way of osteoblasts communicating to the osteoclasts to start removing the bone. Positive signal starts when osteoblasts make something called rank L. These rank L binds to precursor osteoclastic cells. And these receptors on the osteoclast are called rank. Now the binding of rank L and rank leads to osteoclast kind of adhering to the ruffled bone surface and uh, it binds to hydroxyapatite where it produces hydrochloric acid and sort of removes the bone. Okay, but when, and that of course will lead to excessive calciums coming into the blood. So when osteoblast wants to signal no, stop removing the bone, it then produces something called OPG, which is optoprotegerin. An OPG will bind to the rank L and form a complex. And that complex is, in fact, able to bind to rank and tell or signal to osteoclast to stop removing the bone. So that is one thing that is very important for bisphosphonates because they are able to increase OPG levels and produce a negative signal. Or they can inhibit the expression of rank L from the osteoblast and moreover they support osteoclastic apoptosis and the speed that's speeding up the cell program death the maximal therapeutic effect is around 72 hours and so it takes time for bisphosphonates to start working there are some adverse effects that we can have from using bisphosphonates one of them being osteonecrosis of the jaw uh, since it is Preventing osteoclasts, it can reduce the calcium levels. And regarding GI tract, it can cause esophagitis. And so it's been recommended that the pill is taken uh, with a glass of water and at least to stay upright about 30 minutes after taking the drug. It can be nephrotoxic, can produce some rush, among many other side effects. It's important to remember that when the GFR is less than 35, these phosphonates are contraindicated. Calcitonins. Calcitonin is produced from the parafollicular cells and they inhibit calcium resorption from bones and increase renal excretion of calciums and phosphates. So what I have here is a follicular cell that contains colloids. Now, in between these follicular cells are parafollicular cells. These cells synthesize calcitonins. Calcitonin's effect on the bone is to stop bone calcium mobilization. It stops removing the calcium from the bone. So its effect on the bone is to keep the calciums in the bone. And, so, and by so doing, the calciums in the blood levels will decrease. 
its effect on the kidneys is rather to augment or in other words to increase renal excretion of calcium and phosphate. Now it may be used as an initial line of therapy or as a bridge into bisphosphonates. We already said bisphosphonates takes about 72 hours to, to start working. And uh, calcitonin has no direct effect on intestinal calcium absorption. Sinocalcid. Sinocalcid is a calcium mimetic which decreases parathyroid hormone levels. So what happens is that there is the calcium sensing receptors that usually binds to calciums. But the drug sinocalcid is able to saturate, bind to the receptor itself and saturate the receptors in such a way that it sends a signal to the parathyroid gland to shut down and decrease the calcium levels that are being resolved from the bone. It is indicated in moderate to severe forms of primary hyperparathyroidism, which are not amenable to surgery and also may be used in patients after dialysis who have excessive calciums. Diuretics are also useful agents for treating hypercalcemia, but they must only be used after aggressive rehydration has been achieved. Example, furosemide or Lasix inhibits distal renal tubule calcium resorption. Dialysis in very severe or life-threatening hypercalcemia Hemodialysis with an adjusted low dialysate calcium concentration may also be useful. Exploration of the neck or ectomy, by that I mean surgery. Resection of tumors if there is no contraindication is very necessary. We already spoke about the fact that certain squamous cell cancers may produce parathyroid hormone related peptides that can stimulate these calcium sensing receptors and cause an increase in calciums. So resection of tumors, if amenable to surgery, is a good practice as well. Estrogen replacement therapy. There is some evidence to suggest that estrogens may have some benefit for postmenopausal women with primary hyperparathyroidism. Fluid replacement therapy, which I would consider as the first intervention and one of the most important things to do when it comes to the treatment of hypercalcemia should have been the first. So this is the first intervention and the aim is to achieve restoration of the intravascular compartment volume uh, state to be adequate. And we use IV normal saline to do that. It certainly enhances filtration and increases the excretion of calciums from the body. So fluid replacement therapy is very, very important. To remember in your boards on, on any exam, this is the first thing to say. Glucocorticoids inhibits the conversion of vitamin D into calcitriol, which is an active vitamin D. It is used in vitamin D intoxication because of that. And it's also been useful uh, in hypercalcemia secondary to hematologic malignancies such as multiple myeloma or even lymphoma. Gallium nitrate is a salt which inhibits osteoclastic resorption but may cause marrow and renal toxicity. I hope this was useful. Join me again next time on Chalk Talk. See you.